Welcome to the podcast. All right. Pilates for PTs, from business to clinical. Hi, y'all. My name is Stephen Dunn. I co-own Core Therapy and Pilates in Austin, Texas, and I'm the founder of Pilates for PTs. I've been a physical therapist for over 20 years, and I've been teaching Pilates and gyrotonic in my physical therapy practice for the last 15 years. In this podcast, I interview experts from all over the world so that you can learn more on how to grow your business or how to improve your clinical skills as a Pilates instructor in the physical therapy world. Thanks for listening. All right. So welcome to the podcast today. My name is Stephen Dunn, and I am the owner co-owner of Core Therapy and Pilates in Austin, Texas, and done studio coaching. Uh, and what I have today is a very special guest, and we have a, a guest in all the way from Santa Barbara, who's a physical therapist and also utilizing Pilates in her business for the last three to four, three to four years. So her name is Christine Pietan. Did I say that right? Good, yeah. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So she is here, and she's going to tell her story um, I have a little bit of a different story with my background with as far as when I opened my business. It's just been a while. Um, and so I wanted to bring her in and tell her story of what she's done in the last several years that's going to be very pertinent with what people need to know when they're considering uh, utilizing Pilates as a part of their physical therapy business. So with that said, drum roll, drum. Christine, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your history and, uh, and take it from there. Awesome. Thanks so much, Stephen, for having me. I'm excited to be here today and to share my story and my process with um, PT and Pilates and how I kind of came to have both as uh, my primary practice right now. Um, so I uh, went to Emory for PT school in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I, while I was in that program, I actually had a really great opportunity to mentor with another Emory alumni who was a PT Pilates uh, instructor. And so while working with her and mentoring with her, she really kind of kind of got me to think a little bit more outside the box about what other options there are in terms of uh, therapeutic exercise, both during treatment as well as more of a longevity type, you know, continuation of strength and conditioning after a rehab program. And as soon as she put me on a reformer, I was sold. I was like, this is so fun. This is awesome. I really like it. Um, and this was about around the fall of my third year in PT school. Um, and this same mentor actually also um, fortunately hosted a, for the first time ever, which is now kind of a regular in the curriculum at Emory as an elective opportunity, um, was Pilates for the Rehab Professional. And so we actually completed our MAT coursework in that class. Oh, um, cool. and got to learn how to teach and learn the exercises and all of that kind of stuff, as well as how to apply it in a more clinical type application. Um, so it was a really great way to kind of see what, you know, how Pilates could be used, um, both from a rehab standpoint, as well as just a general kind of, you know, maintenance program for, for clients and, and also for ourselves. A lot of my classmates kind of came into it being like, yeah, I want this. I think this would be cool for my patients, but also selfishly, I think I need this too. <laughs> so it was a nice way to practice with each other and learn from each other and, and to all of us to really benefit in a different way. And so after that semester, um, I kind of jumped on board of like, okay, I really want to commit to a full comprehensive um, education within the Pilates field. And um, so I did my training through Balanced Body and I really enjoyed my, my programming through there and I finished about half of it through that next year that I had in Atlanta. And then I moved back to California. California is home for me. Um, and so I moved to Santa Barbara, California and um, continued my next couple of modules that I still had left of my balanced body curriculum over about the next year while I was starting my first year practicing um, as a clinician. And during that time, I really, um, I was seeing clients in a traditional outpatient orthopedic practice, um, but I was also, you know, I'd reached out to a couple of gyms and Pilates studios in town to kind of network with them and also to offer my services as a Pilates instructor while I was still kind of continuing everything. Um, and I built some really great relationships with people in town with other instructors and things who 
we could kind of bounce ideas off of. I was able to share my rehab lens for them of how to address different things with different clients. And that kind of just started different conversations and that led to me being connected with some clients. So I would started seeing some clients privately, um, kind of usually early in the morning before I would go into clinic. I did that about two days a week during my first year here in Santa Barbara. And that started to create a different relationship with clients. They started to know me as a Pilates instructor. They also started to ask me if I could, you know, do PT with them for certain injuries they had. Could you see my spouse, my friend, my, <laughs> my sister, fill in the blank person in their life? Because they're like, hey, I think you have a really cool skill set between knowing the PT side and also then being able to use Pilates both from a rehab side as well as just regular strength and conditioning. Um, so that kind of started to spin my wheels a little bit in terms of, wow, I have, I'm having a lot of great opportunities to work with other people outside of a clinical setting. And to be completely honest, I was getting paid about three times as much an hour to do the Pilates stuff and see those private PT clients than I was being paid in the PT clinic. Mm -hmm. So while that was like a kind of a light bulb moment for me, it was, it was sort of bittersweet. It was like very, um, I remember coming home being like, this doesn't make sense. I just spent three years on a doctorate level education and I'm getting paid X to work in an outpatient clinic. And now I can see a patient or a private client in a gym doing an hour of Pilates, which yes, I'm still using my PT brain, but they're looking at me as really a Pilates instructor and I'm getting paid three times as much. And I, Physically, I'm really hardly having to exert myself. So, hmm. <laughs> and so in that next year, I started kind of creating and working towards trying to open up my own practice because I felt like there was enough of a following with my client base and enough people that said, yeah, I think you should do this. And we don't really have enough of this type of specialty here in Santa Barbara. Um, and so I was lucky enough after that one year, I found a partner and we were able to rent a space together. Um, and then I went down to part-time at the outpatient orthopedic clinic and transitioned to my other 20 hours a week to really just focusing on my business. Yeah. And, um, and that kind of just continued to escalate over the next six months. And then I eventually left my outpatient clinic um, and just committed to doing my own thing. And so now I'm just my, my own person in my own space. Um, my partner about six months into us getting our space had some health related issues. And so she needed to, to leave and step out. Um, so that was a little overwhelming. That was not part of the plan, but, um, but it worked out and it actually sort of put a little fire under me to, to really hustle, um, and to fill my practice. And so I am fortunate now to say that I'm in my, my third year of my practice and growing really well. And I also now, kind of incorporate, I still see patients for traditional kind of sports and orthopedic practice. Mm -hmm. I'm also a pelvic floor physical therapist. So I do internal treatment for women's pelvic floor. Um, and then I also do Pilates. And so I can kind of blend any of those or silo them, if you will, depending on what my clients need. But I find that I always kind of blend a little bit. And a lot of my patients who came in just for PT usually stay with me and evolve into Pilates, which is a really great way to stay connected with them and um, to continue to offer wellness opportunities for people to stay healthy. So that's, awesome. that's kind of where, where I'm at. <laughs> I love it. Let, can, let me ask you a couple of questions, a few things you talked about. Sure. Does, does Emory still offer that certification or that kind of uh, elective through their program? I believe they do. So my professor and my mentor is Dr. Julie Granger and um, she's wonderful and is a, uh, a Pilates instructor and a PT that is in Atlanta still. Um, she has her own practice, um, pr uh, Prism Physical Therapy. And she first started the elective, and I believe she still offers it within the curriculum, um, but I'm not sure if it's offered every year. But it definitely was something that um, was offered more than once and really triggered a lot of people in my, my class and I think some subsequent classes to really see the benefit and the beauty of being able to optimize both Pilates with our PT lens. Yeah, so um, I appreciate her doing that because I don't know if I would really be where I'm at without her kind of sparking that idea in my head. Yeah. So that, that was sparked in PT school with some, yeah. some actual training that allowed you to be marketable in a different way as soon as you got out of school. Totally. And from, you know, it's a, I'm glad you brought that up because that's really honestly another reason why I did want to do the course because like, oh, cool, this will be like another way to set myself apart in an outpatient clinic setting, which, you know, I figured, you know, it's always nice to have a little bit of a different 
you know, tool that you can offer. Yeah. Um, and it was also something that I figured, you know, because I fell in love with it immediately and was like, oh, I'm going to definitely be doing this. I was looking at it too from the standpoint of I'm going to be using it with my patients in clinic because I can do map Pilates, the basics, fundamentals, different things that can they can apply and take that home. But also to it ended up being that some of my patients that I had in that outpatient clinic reached out to our clinic because they read my bio and learned that, oh, you have experience in Pilates. I really like Pilates and would actually request me specifically. So it ended up being a nice way for people to to want to reach out or to kind of say, hey, I want to work with her because I think she might have a specialty that I'm interested in. So it did definitely help set me apart a little bit sometimes from my other colleagues in a different way. Um, and it was nice to have a little bit of dialogue with them sometimes too, because they'd be like, hey, can you teach me some Pilates things? I think this is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and so it was, a, it was an interesting way and a nice way to, to share expertise. Got it. Well, I know um, at one point, and I don't know if it's still this way, um, but the school in Miami, the physical therapy school at the University of Miami, yeah. uh -huh. where the pole star is. Exactly, um, yeah. I know they have or had an elective part of, uh, for their program because once someone moved to Austin once, um, we've been here for 13 years now, open, and someone moved here years ago now, I don't know, maybe eight or nine years ago, maybe, maybe more, maybe less, I can't remember. But she came in one day because she wanted to just see what we were doing and see mm -hmm. how we were using a full Pilates studio as a, as a PT clinic that instead of it being a PT clinic that had a reformer in the corner, it was a right. Pilates studio that had a PT in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so she came, she came to check it out. And like just the fact that, that she got exposed to it and got to learn it and came out of school ready to do that and ready to be different. I, it was just so exciting for me um, because I had to find it in a totally different way, and and you know I found it my own way, but it definitely wasn't um, through through any formal education, and uh, which I think gives it a lot more validity um, and and whatnot than because I think that was the hardest part for me. And granted, when I was going through this, it was a long time ago, and the trademark uh, um, controversy and lawsuit had just happened, so like. Okay. The word Pilates was just able, you were able to like actually put something in your name and with the word Pilates for only about a year or two years after I was starting to search for it. So there wasn't much online because there was this like time, time and period where there was nothing online about it because of this, right. this legal trademark stuff. But, but anyway, um, that's a different story for a different day. Um, so that's exciting to hear uh, again about schools offering that and setting that play, uh, that in, in play because when you, if you can do anything to set yourself apart as a PT, that's kind of saturated. I feel in ways like there's a lot of PTs in my my general vicinity, um, but there's and and I shouldn't. I was about to say that there's no one doing Pilates, but actually there are. There's three or four people doing Pilates and and that have that are in the near area because it's just grown in popularity. And what I always say is that Pilates is more marketable than physical therapy. More people in the general population know what Pilates is than they don't know what physical therapy is. So like you said, your, your big expense, expensive education for your PT versus your informal, less expensive education for Pilates, long run, the Pilates education is going to be the best investment of your life um, because of what it's, gonna, what it's already done and what it's going to continue to do for a, a whole long career. Um, awesome. So, so you've been open now. You said your third year. And, and you, do you have like all the equipment at your place? Is it a, a full studio? So I have kind of a modified version. Um, so my office is about 300 square feet. So I have to get a little creative with my, my equipment. Yeah. So basically I, have, I have a Pilates chair. I have um, kind of the, the balance body kind of um, portable kind of arc barrel. Yep. And then I have a reformer that has a tower on the end. So I have yep. a versatility with that amount of equipment. Um, and things like that, but I, I wish I could have all of them, but I kind of had to sort of pick and choose based on the size of my space. And also too, when I was starting out, um, when I finally made that leap and things, I didn't have a ton of financial runway to just go with whatever I wanted. Yes. So kind of like, okay, how do I get smart with my budget and what equipment do I really, really need? And then versus what's nice to have. And then as I've kind of over the years, I've been able to acquire um, more equipment. But when I first started, it was literally just a reformer. Yeah. Um, and over time, I then slowly added a chair and I eventually added a tower. 
and things like that and, and threw a barrel in, in the mix in between. But yeah, it's been something that eventually in, I think, a bigger picture, I would love to eventually expand into a slightly bigger space um, and have a little bit more um, openness, not just for the equipment, but also to, to potentially have more clinicians um, come in and instructors too um, as a long-term goal. But, um, but yeah, I've been able to kind of, I think with the equipment I have achieve most of the stuff, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so it's a modified version. Sure. And, and, and when we started, we had a room that was basically a break room that it was a, a PT clinic. It was an HMO clinic. Got it. And I went to him and I said, Hey, let me start a, a Pilates program for y'all and we'll be able to charge PPOs instead of just HMOs. And, and uh, my wife, Cheryl, will be able to work after hours and when I'm not using it. So this machine's being used for, by more than just me. And we worked out a profit sharing deal. And with doing that, all we had was a little tiny, tiny room that basically, basically is the size of my treatment room right now. And mm -hmm. we put a reformer with it, with a combo tape, uh, you know, half a, yeah. half a trap table on the end. It was an old yeah. men's body version, like way back in the day. <laughs> the vintage. <laughs> It was called the JC 5600 because it was named after the guy JC who who kind of designed that 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 whole idea of combining them, and the 5600 yeah. was because I think of how much it cost, um, <laughs> you know. Awesome. Yeah. And, I, and I was able to like buy it from someone secondhand and sell it secondhand, and and it kept its value. Now I'm going to go into something I'm a little tangent here, but the equipment is keeps its value. Every everything that I bought 13 years ago it's actually because of how much it's gone up and what balanced body charges for it. I could sell everything I bought for more than I paid for it. Nice. Everything. <laughs> Even though <laughs> I, it's, it's old, I've maintained it. I've, I've switched out the springs every couple of years, about every two years I switch out all the springs. Yeah. Um, and I really just taken care of it. And I have four reformers and one trap table. And one of those reformers is a combo unit. Um, and then I have the barrel but the barrel is not like the ladder barrel. It's, it's really not used a whole lot um, compared for the space and the size that it takes up and the amount of money that it costs. I don't think it's that, that cost effective. Um, whereas a reformer, man, it, if you can have people teaching on a reformer all day, they'll, they'll come in for that. And so, you know, it, it, it's, a, um, it's a fun process to see people learn how to do Pilates in a physical therapy setting and want to do it for a long time. There's, there's the end of my tangent. So um, I love it. I love it. Now we have balanced body equipment. Do you have the wooden equipment, the studio equipment, or do you have the Allegro? So I actually have stock equipment. Oh, equipment. awesome. Um, oh. And some balanced body. I'm kind of a hybrid. Um, so I, it actually started when I was first with my partner. My partner went through her stock training. She was a Pilates instructor. Um, oh. and so she had already had purchased her own equipment and all kinds of things. And she exposed me to her stock equipment and I really liked it. It's um, nice. Yeah. It's super nice. So um, when I was in that process of like, well, I'm already going to be buying equipment and whatnot. And originally our plan was that we were to, we were going to be together for a while. And um, when I wasn't in the office or she wasn't, if we were going to be doing duets or different things, because um, we had two reformers initially in that space, it would have been really difficult to have two different style reformers just because sometimes the springs are slightly different. Sure. All that sure. kind of stuff. So, um, so I made the decision after I tried her equipment and things and really liked it. I said, okay, I can go stop. That's fine. Yeah. So that's kind of how I ended up going with my stop reformer and tower. Um, but then through other equipment and things, um, I mean, I did all my training on the traditional wooden reformers. Yeah. Um, you know, I still teach occasionally when I will do, you know, a, a lecture or a, a specialty class or something at some of the local studios here in Santa Barbara, all of their equipment is all balanced body with the, the traditional wooden frame. So yeah. I, I now know how to adjust and what I would do on my stock reformer. The springs are slightly different to what I would do on a balanced body. So um, at first it was like very nerve wracking because I was like, shoot, I only know one way. Um, but now I'm much more versatile in terms of knowing how to acclimate. Um, but yeah, so I have a, a balanced body chair that was actually given to me by a client um, who she's like, this has been in my house forever. I don't really use it. Would you like to have it? And I was like, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> she's like, I use it. I would use it more here with you than it will get any activity at my house. So, um, so I have, I acquired that from her, which was a beautiful gift. Um, and then other, you know, the other thing is just kind of that styrofoam balanced body, like arc barrel. So I just ended up purchasing that later on, but 
Yeah. And, and when your space is limited, you don't want to actually put too put too much more in there because you, exactly. it, it becomes a problem. It gets in the way. Uh, totally. That's for sure. Well, yeah, yeah, we started with something minimal and, and that led to all we needed in that space. And then once we figured out, all right, we did this for this company. Now we can go do it for our own company. Yeah. That, that's kind of what we did. We, were, we did that actually in Burbank. We were living in LA at the time. And oh, gotcha. I was doing contract work out there. And um, yeah. I, I went to the company I was doing contract work for. And I said, all right, instead of sending me all over to your 10 clinics, 12 clinics, 15 clinics, let me, let me just go to one and start a little program. And they were like, okay. And so it was, it was fun because I got to learn on their dime. Um, yeah. But, really, but, but I was building something for them. Every dollar I made out of my profit sharing deal, I was making money for them. So it was kind of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. But it gave me the confidence to come here and do it. Um, totally. It's neat that they were open to the idea because I feel like that could have gone a bunch of different ways where they could have just said, hey, this is a really new kind of foreign idea. How about I don't, I don't know about this. I don't think so. Um, so it's cool that they were open to it because I feel like even now still with some of my own colleagues and things that work in bigger hospital settings, when they propose an idea like that, it, it kind of gets, sh it gets shot down. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, it's a challenge. That's for sure. It's, um, everything that I've kind of settled into in my career, I feel like I'm swimming upstream against the flow of the rest of my uh, profession, which yeah. is uh, I'm okay with, to be honest, um, because it works, uh, it works for my clients and, and it, they, they love it and they tell their friends and, and, and it becomes a place that, that they come to. Um, we had two people say recently that our place reminds them of Cheers, the bar from the 80s where like Aww. everybody knows their name. And they say That's it's so lot, awesome. They, they said it's a lot more um, it's a lot more healthy to be going to a place like a Pilates <laughs> studio than going drinking at Cheers, but the, it was the same feel. And, and we see women – we see men too, but women who become uh, friends from coming to our classes and they, they, they'll take a class at noon and then they go have lunch after and they've just known each other from class and before you know it, they're like good buddies. And so we see this whole community grow around our studio, which is something really, really pretty awesome. Now, let me ask you this. What would you say your percentage uh, on a weekly basis is like strictly PT versus teaching Pilates versus uh, com combining the two? And, 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 and there may not be a way to really define this uh, because sometimes it's hard to define what you are doing. But 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 if you can uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Sure. So just to give you some perspective. So um, I'm usually seeing about six ish clients a day. Um, and that can be a Pilates client or it can be a PT client. Um, and so, you know, on average, I would say I probably have about a third to maybe 40% of my caseload that are purely Pilates. Um, and so not to say that I'm not ever turning my, my PT lens off. I feel like I'm still yeah. always very much teaching through a PT, you know, scope of practice, yeah. but, um, but I would say, yeah, about 40% of my caseload is, you know, standing appointments of Pilates. They just come in, this is their wellness program, whatnot. It's just baked into their schedule that this is what they do for, you know, if you will, personal training, um, and just keeping their body moving as well as they can for as long as they can. Um, and then occasionally those clients, sure, we all get aches, pains, do something funny, injure ourselves, whatever. We're all human. Um, so sometimes occasionally they'll walk in and be like, Hey, I did this thing over the weekend or I kind of wrecked myself, whatever. And it might get converted quick into a PT session. But for the most part, those are my people that I know every time they come in, I'm planning for a Pilates session. Um, and then I would say about the other 60% are, um, our PT. And I would say in the beginning with most of my PT clients, my first few sessions, you know, are really, I'm not often getting them on the machine, not because I don't want to, but mostly because I want to make sure that they're getting the manual treatment they need. And then making sure that I give them exercises that they can replicate at home. If they had a reformer at home, I'd be like, okay, you're on the reformer first. Here's your exercises. Recreate this at home. But that's, that's not nothing. Normal. That's not every day. No. So I usually start them and make sure that they've got a program that they're doing regularly at home. And then once that's kind of established and sure it gets tweaked over, you know, their time with me. But once that's pretty set, then I start doing about half of my treatment that's manual and then half I get them on the machines and we're working on things and addressing movement patterns and re-education of movement and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, I would say... 40% Pilates, 60% PT with still Pilates being blended in as we go. Got it. Got it. Now, mm -hmm. do you charge a different price for those two things, two services? 
So it's a good question. So yes, and um, that's been something that I've also been kind of working on and playing with. So when I first started, um, I just kind of had a flat rate for anything that I was doing. Um, and recently, um, I kind of adjusted my rates and things. I kind of should have been doing that a little bit over my years, but um, you know, being new to being a PT and new to the business side and all that kind of things, um, you know, I. I wasn't as diligent about making sure that that was being adjusted accordingly. So I just kind of made a, a decent jump recently. Um, and so my rates now are different. Um, so a Pilates session that's strictly a Pilates session is a little bit less expensive than a session that's just PT. Um, but eventually my plan is to kind of just basically make it a flat rate across the board because regardless, it's not like when I'm teaching a Pilates client, I'm, removing my PT knowledge. Yeah. So in my argument would be that, you know, I think that we should, we as PT should be charging the same rate for whatever we're doing. It should just be a flat rate for our time because we're using our education knowledge completely. We're not turning off part of it. So therefore you get a discount. It should just be, you want to work with me with my special level of expertise and special blend of skills this is what my rates are. Yeah. Um, so that's what I would recommend for, for clinicians that, you know, are wanting to go into this space and are going to be adding Pilates, or even if you already do this combo, I would say you're worth what you are worth, regardless of what you're doing. I like that advice. You know, that's, that's great advice because the way, you know, I've been a PT for 20 years now, but my business has been with our uh, current business has been 13 years and we took insurance for 10 of those years in the last three we have not. And mm -hmm. when I took insurance. I did a lot more of all of it. But now that I don't take insurance, I tend to do way more hands on and manual therapy. Yeah. And I introduced the uh, Pilates concepts. I introduced what they can do at home. I introduced things over this, like basically I kind of have typically see people for a four to six visit plan to mm -hmm. get them over to my Pilates trainers. Now, some people come in and they're way quicker and they don't need to see me that long, but yeah. I, I use it in a scenario and I talk about this through the whole beginning, all the phases of it. It's like, yeah, you're going to see me until you're doing this, this and this, but then they're going to take you to the promised land because then they're not what, what and, then, and I do this for two reasons because when people come and see me, that there is a little shock value with the, the, the price that I'm charging. And, sure. then, and then when I say, yeah, but you can see my trainers and they're $85 an hour. They're like, Oh, that's a steal. <laughs> yeah. but, but if someone comes into my world and to just do Pilates and it's $85 an hour, they're like, Holy moly, that's expensive. So it's all be, uh, about how you kind of pre-frame it. And so yeah. when I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm expensive, but I'm going to make you feel better. I'm going to teach you all the stuff that you need to do at home. I'm going to give you the tools that you're not going to need to come see me for a long time. But yeah. what they're going to teach you and where they're going to take you, it's going to take two to three months to get where we want to go. And I can take you through all of it, but my rate's my rate. Their rate is less. So once you're seeing them, you might see me here and there for a tune up here and there for a 30 minute tune up, but I want to see you for an hour to get to this point. Then I'm passing you over to them and we might do some 30 minute sessions in there. And then the reality is they're starting to already trust my whole process right. because I'm letting them know that I've got seven trainers that work for me that we've trained them all. We love them all. We, 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 we support them. They're gonna, they, they will read the chart. They will know the goals. They will know what homework you've already done. If you have a question about their, the homework, they will answer that. Um, and so we're a team to help get you to where we need to go. And that's where we allow this, the, the programs to actually last long term. And then our group classes, we have four people in a reformer, and they can pay 85 bucks a month, 145 bucks a month, 185 bucks a month, depending on how frequently they want to do that. So then all of a sudden the bottom of the funnel is pretty inexpensive. The top is expensive with me. The private training is a lot less. And then the bottom of the funnel for our group classes becomes very affordable. And people are paying a lot more than that for specialty classes around here all the time. So that's kind of how we, we do it. And so I don't teach as much Pilates, but me and my other PT, we both teach a Pilates class because it's a way, it's a lead generation magnet. So people, People come in and they're like, oh, there's a PT that teaches this class. I'm going to go there because they're like, they still don't want to come see me for the price, right? 
And they're like, I ain't paying that money to see that dude. And then they come into my class and I got four people in class and I got all four of them doing something totally different because I can tell by watching them walk in like problems they have. And I can ask a couple questions and I can get them going on something that's very, um, that's very much catered to what they need, even though there's four people in that class. And then we only do like six or eight exercises instead of 25 in the course of the hour. And there's so much information and detail that when they leave, they're like, hey, dude, can I come see you for a session or two? And that's where I, it opens the door <laughs> for us to get people in the door and uh, to see the PT. And here we are. They're, they're trusting me over weeks and several weeks. So, so me and my uh, PT, Allison, we both get clients that way. Um, and so that's one of my biggest tips to, to people starting is, is teach and that, and that I do teach for the normal price of what people pay to be in my group classes. I don't charge anymore. I don't, I don't charge, act like I'm special. And I just say, this is, this is my, this is my cheap rate for the day. And I'm uh, in that hour. I may, if there's only two people in class or one people in class, which doesn't happen much, but every once in a while that happens, I'm losing. I'm not making any money that hour. But if I get two people in the class and one becomes a client of mine, then all day. I'll take that all day long. So it sounds like you're at a point where if you're seeing six people a week and you have enough people that are, see that are seeing you as a trainer at a lesser rate, it's time for you to bring in someone to help you at a lesser rate so that you can charge your full rate all day, every day, even on Tuesday. And does that, does that make sense? Yep. I know this, this This isn't an advice session, but my advice to you <laughs> that you didn't ask for, that my unsolicited advice is to start thinking of how you can utilize the space when you're not there with someone else who you trust. And and it sounds like you were doing that with, with your partner and that, that didn't work for, for whatever reason. But now start for, networking within those people that you've uh, you've already known for these years now and start finding someone that you can offer them something a little better than they have where they're at. Um, there's only a handful of Pilates instructors that truly want to work with rehab people. I found most of them really want to work with the fitness world. So when you do find those people that like stick out like a sore thumb at the studio they're at, those are the people that we hire if they're trained elsewhere, but everyone else we try to bring through our own training. And what we do with our training is we use the balanced body manuals and mm -hmm. teach them those manuals and then set them up to take the PMA exam. So, but the whole time I'm teaching them and Cheryl's teaching them what, what we've seen work and what, what they need to know for this condition and that condition. So it's a really, it's a really catered kind of to a PT mindset or a Pilates instructor who wants to really think rehab, but we're getting them ready to pass the whole, the whole shebang for the PMA, not just yeah. the therapeutic side. So I think that's really helpful, though, because to be honest, like a lot of people that end up seeking out Pilates, they're usually coming because they have an injury. So mm -hmm. most people don't choose to seek out Pilates just be like, oh, I heard it's cool and I want to try it. It's usually like they get exposed to it after they've either gone through a rehab program or somebody else that they know kind of went into it from that angle and spoke highly of it. And so they show up and they're like, Hey, I heard that this really helped my friend or my family member get better. I want to try Pilates too. So having, having the diverse skill set of whether you are a PT Pilates instructor or you're a Pilates instructor who's had education or access to work with other PTs, chiropractors, other movement professionals to give some education around how to deal with special patient populations with injuries makes those Pilates instructors that much more valuable too. Because, sure. and I think too more confident in their ability to work with a more diverse client population. Um, because a lot of the people that I think stay within the fitness side, it's some, I think truly just love being on that side and that's fine. I think that there is also another subcategory within that larger category that they don't feel confident enough to work with, patients or clients that have more complicated histories. And so they prefer just to stay in the fitness side where they can push people and, you know, go through the exercises and bang it out in a session, which is great. But if you put someone in front of them that has a shoulder issue or a hip issue, that can really throw those instructors off and they're not quite sure how to address a whole session around that and or they may flare up that injury. So 
you know, I think that it's important for any instructor, regardless if they have access to work with other other teachers or movement professionals like you and I, it gives them a whole nother breadth of level and understanding to the Pilates repertoire too. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's we can all learn from each other. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. That, that makes total sense. And that kind of goes back to what I said earlier, that Pilates is more well-known than PT. Totally. The people are seeking yeah. Pilates for, for back pain, hip pain, neck pain relief, more so than they're seeking it for, for PT. Um, yeah. But there's the other side of that. There's also the negative of Pilates where people are go get hurt in those gym mm -hmm. classes and those mat classes with 30 people. Um, yeah. and the former class and in and, and Austin we have a whole lot of these new um, kind of like chains opening and they're like mega reformers and stuff and it's like yeah. CrossFit reformers and yeah. it's really a new totally different mindset and so there's there's two things people love Pilates because it helped them so much or people are getting injured in those kind of places because the people that we should be seeing don't need to be there I'll just say it that way and and, <laughs> and, and you know, they're, they're, they're serving some people and there's, there's, there's people, there are people that can handle what they're doing, but my clients can't. Um, but there's a negative of Pilates in the medical field. Doctors, like some doctors will not refer to me because we do Pilates because they're like, nah, that's hurt too many people. Um, but these are pretty close minded doctors, um, that are pushing drugs and surgery. Um, so, you know, I really don't, the, the, you know, it's all good. Those people, it's fine. Um, but the reality is, if you do it mindful and you do it really intentful, it can really change the way you move with everything. And then you can go do whatever you want to do. And it, it's the foundation that allows you to go do whatever. But most people don't approach it that way. And that's where we approach it as truly the foundation that's going to allow people to, to do whatever they want to do, whether it's sports or, or performance or, or just sitting at their desk better. For me, I had terrible posture, terrible posture. I was 28 year old PT played sports my whole life. I was a, I'm a big jock. I, you know, the, the fact that I'm a Pilates instructor is a totally different, we'll get, that's a different story for a different day. But like, I'm like this big dude that was standing like this. And my Pilates teacher's like, dude, you got the worst posture of anyone I've seen. I'm like, no, it's not that bad. And she took a picture of me when, with an old digital camera, we had to plug it into the computer and see it that way. And I'm like, holy moly, that's some terrible posture. And she was a 60 year old lady who like had ran a, marathon on every continent in the world and played tennis and pickle and she was like you know great athlete and I'm, she's like ripping me and I was like half her age more than less than, you know she was probably 65 at the time I was 28 going oh man I feel terrible this woman just gave me a new one but she taught me Pilates and she taught me in a way that I finally learned to stand up and once I learned to st stand up straight I was 6'2 again 6'2 and a half again instead of like 5'11 and what ended up happening then is my confidence got a lot better. I felt a lot better. I could breathe better. Everything changed. And then I was like, all I want to do is teach people what I've learned. Like, that's all I want to do. Like, you, you come in, everyone I see has terrible posture. Everyone I see is hurting. I'm just going to teach you what helped me. And, and if you like it, cool. If you don't, that's cool, too. There's a lot of, there's a lot of variety of the PT out there, right? So. Yeah. But the ones that like it, they love it. They stick around for a long time, and it, and it becomes a lifestyle. Um, and that lifestyle, they sense it when in our passion when we talk about it, when we teach it. Um, and that's one of the differences in our studios and, and than a lot of the other ones is, is just our, our, our zest for it. Um, but every one of our trainers is doing it for a very personal reason, that it helped them in, in some way. Um, there, none of our trainers are doing it because it's a hip, trendy, cool job. Uh, none. And those people won't work for me. <laughs> I, I weed them out real quick. So, well, you know, Christine, this was awesome. I, I'm, I'm so excited to, to hear another story. Um, you know, if there's a language that we're talking that some won't understand at first because we've, we've been in this for some time, but the language of the, the equipment and the stat and balanced body and all that. And that's a part of what I want to educate people on so that they can learn the process of, of it because it is a little overwhelming and, and whatnot. So with that said, do you have any other questions? You, uh, how, how can people reach you um, if they want to reach out to you with questions for you? Sure. Um, so I'm on social media. I have a Facebook page um, for my practice, which is just my last name, Piaton Physical Therapy. Um, and I can send you that information if you have shown us or put a comment under um, this video wherever you post it. 
Um, and then I'm also on Instagram at Pietan PT. And, um, and you can also shoot me an email um, as well. So my email is just my first name, Christine, at Pietan Physical Therapy, all spelled out, dot com. And I'll, I'll link all this and, and put some uh, titles and stuff in the, uh, I'll edit that in to this. Cool. So we'll be able to see that and I'll make sure it's spelled correctly and all that jazz. So, well, I really appreciate your time. I'm going to wrap it up. I have to head back to the office today. I got to see my afternoon clients. Um, again, I, I love hearing your story. I love hearing that you're, you're busy with it too. You know, six people a day is a, is a great, is a great consistency. Um, what I would love to do is talk more at one point to kind of talk about how you bring people in. How do you um, get people in the door? Um, you, once they're there, you, you're keeping them. But yep. how, we talk about one day how you get them in the door. How, once they're in the door, how do you keep them? There's a lot of um, different skills that go into all of that. And if you're busy, you have to be doing that stuff. Um, so to me, that's very exciting. But I also want to say I can't wait to see you grow. Because you're you're ready to grow. Because everything you're telling me, you're you're ready to grow. And with that, it's just a matter of figuring out what that growth is for you, um, and start finding the way to make that happen. Um, I'm hiring a new PT right now, and I'm really excited because it's going to allow me to step back from seeing 30, 35 people a week and actually grow my business in a different direction. And I've been doing this a long time, and I love treating patients, but I have to step back and see less to take it to the next level. And so it's hard. It's really hard. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm struggling with the idea of not like being full with patience. Um, but it, cause it's what I love, but at the same time, growing and sharing and getting other people the knowledge to take this and do their own thing is another passion that, that I'm with that I have as well. So with that said, thank you very much. I love it. I love it. I appreciate it. Um, and, We'll chat real soon, and I'll get this out to you as soon as possible. Awesome. Thanks so much, Stephen, for having me. It was a pleasure to be here. I'm glad I could share. And, yes, please, for anyone who has questions or anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd be happy to chat with you and connect with you and answer any questions that I can. Um, and I look forward to coming back on and sharing the, the part two that you were yeah. saying. About how do you bring people in, and how do you continue that relationship with them once they're there? Because that is really, obviously, the, the big piece of it, too. It's one piece to get people in the door, but it's also the second piece to build that relationship. And that's really specialized and individualized to each person. And, um, but that's also, I think, the, the beauty and what I enjoy most about what I do is that, yeah, I don't get to just usually see my clients for four to six weeks or whatever it is for their plan of care. I typically get to have years of relationships with them and get to know their families and their kids and spouses and all kinds of stuff and so it becomes a really a friendship if you will rather than just a client it's a community yeah totally and that's a culture that you create and if you can create that culture then people are gonna want to be around that and want to tell their friends and bring everyone in their, in their family so and it makes it not really feel like work it just makes it feel kind of like fun like you're getting to kind of hang out with your friends every day and help them get better and share stories with each other and challenge each other and learn from each other. And so it makes it a really beautiful community all the way around. I love it. I love it. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, that's what it's all about. That's truly why we became physical therapists. And, totally. and I feel like Pilates gave me a, a, a much deeper way to foster those relationships than what I'd learned as a P, as a PT in the traditional mindset and traditional role. So I, I think it was vital for, for, for me to still be 20 years into it and love, love doing it every day. So yeah, <laughs> all good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks a bunch. We'll set something up and we'll do this again. Um, and we'll keep talking. I love it. Great conversation. And you have a fantastic day. Enjoy the weather in Santa Barbara. It's 102 in Austin. So it's like, it's hot here. I'm, I'm standing in the air condition with the fan on. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Yeah, that's right. We need it. Well, take care. Have a great day and we'll chat soon. Okay. All right. Bye now. Well, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. And if you did, could you do us a favor and leave some love and write us a review? My name is Stephen Dunn. I help physical therapists incorporate Pilates into their physical therapy practice. If you would like more information on how you can incorporate Pilates into your physical therapy practice, then like my Facebook page, Pilates for PT.